One of the most important tools for the Industrial Revolution was a lathe. Earlier this year, I built one of the earlier forms of it, the pole lathe. The pole lathe is an amazing tool, useful for a lot of woodworking, but it also has its limitations. Because it works on a spring, it has to reciprocate and rewind between every press of the pedal. This gives a bit more of a challenging learning curve to master it, as you can only use it half the time it's spinning, and having to stop and rewind with the spring limits the speed of rotation you can achieve with it. With the goal of using it as a tool for industrialization, we're gonna need something with a bit more power that can achieve a higher rotational speed, as we're gonna want a lathe that's capable of shaping a wide variety of materials, from dried wood to eventually metals. And that's gonna require a bit more power. So for some visionary help to try and improve my current lathe design, let's look at some of the 500 year old sketches of Leonardo da Vinci. Da Vinci is believed to be one of the first people to sketch the design of a treadle lathe. The key component to the lathe is the addition of a flywheel as depicted in his drawings. A large heavy wheel, it adds mass to the spinning of the lathe and allows rotational energy to be stored. So once the flywheel starts spinning, its inertia will help keep it spinning. Then is the addition of a treadle with a crank. When spinning, this allows additional energy to be added to the lathe by simply pumping the treadle up and down, allowing you to increase the rotational speed of the lathe to be higher and higher. But first, thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. If you feel like you need to speak to someone or you just need a mental health check-in, BetterHelp is an amazing online resource that allows you to do just that. It's an online therapeutic resource that sets your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist, all from the comfort of your home. People often forget that mental health is just as important as physical health. I know I do. To get started, head to betterhelp.com slash htme, answer a few questions about your state of mind, and before you know it, you'll be matched with a licensed therapist who will work with you. It takes about as much effort as watching a YouTube video to start your connection to BetterHelp. BetterHelp is about facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change therapists as needed. 
Head to betterhelp.com slash HTME to answer a few questions and get paired up with a therapist. Oh yeah, and you'll also get 10% off your first month when you click that link below. All right, let's make some lube. To really get some good motion with the wheel, we want to reduce as much friction as possible. And for that, we want a lubricant or a grease. Today, we're gonna to explore a little bit more advanced, one that was supposedly used by the ancient Egyptians and ancient Romans, where you basically do very similar to soap making, but instead of using lye, you use lime with your fat, in this case, olive oil. You react the two and you get a soapy substance that is not water soluble. So for actually washing, it's not very useful, but for use as a lubricant, it's pretty good. So basically, you're just gonna combine the olive oil with lime to produce our calcium grease. As I have a dried out lime, so first up we'll add a little bit of water to really get kind of hot. So now we can add the quick lime paste to our olive oil. Should hopefully dissolve and get us a nice grease. Then strain out the solids that precipitated, and the end result is this nice solution of calcium grease with the remaining olive oil, which can then be applied and used to reduce friction on any axles in our future build. All right, so here we have the Leonardo da Vinci lathe. We have our treadle, we have the crank, and we have the flywheel. So the pole lathe has the disadvantage that you have to go back and forth with the spring. And this one is all continual motion in one direction. Once you get going, you get a pretty decent speed, and you can just keep pumping it to go faster and faster. And the real key to it is the flywheel, which helps kind of store momentum. And I've seen some versions of this that are even bigger. They probably work even better. So I made some improvements to the Da Vinci lathe. Uh, the biggest one is I made a giant flywheel that uh, is more comparable to the size on there. And that's gonna hopefully give it some nice momentum in it. Kind of went a different style with the, the actual frame of it, just because before it was a little bit wobbly as it's picked up momentum. I think it's all set up. It's a bit of effort to get going. Um, but this is it, this is basically what he sketched. This is Leonardo's lathe, and I have to say it, it does work. And the biggest shortcoming I'd say to this is that it, it's a what we call the direct drive, that the, the speed of the flywheel is how fast our actual object goes when we lathe on it. So the biggest improvement you could make is turning this giant flywheel into pulley to a smaller wheel that is then connected to the drive, every rotation you do of this gives you multiple rotations of here, allowing you to go a lot faster. The main goal is to get a higher RPMs so we can lay some harder woods and materials. But it's kind of cool to put this hypothetical drawing that Leonardo da Vinci made and actually make it real. It does work and it's a little bit easier to use just because there's no like rhythm of having to to do it on each push. This is one continuous motion. So these are all good improvements. But the next step is to do what is a more modern style of treadle lathe that became popular a little bit later in history where you use a pulley. So I did a whole second part of this video. That was the ultimate goal. And I have spent several weeks now I was able to repurpose the, the frame and the wheel that I made first. Able to get something that is really close to working. I'm finding that just like the little bit of complexity to it, just all the extra moving parts, that just every, every little thing, something could go wrong. A little too friction here and here and here, and then that's too much pressure, so then I have 
keep breaking parts on it. And I think at this point, I pretty much rebuilt it several times now and it's still not quite working. I can kind of get it spinning. It's gonna take a lot more tweaking. Hopefully I can get a better working result in the future and you'll kind of see that tool getting used once it's up and running. The very next step after the treadle lathe and powering it by foot is to actually connect it to an external power source, such as a water wheel. Then we could really get some power and have something we could even do metal and stuff, which would be really important for a, a lot of outgoing projects, uh, perhaps most notably the steam engine. I'm pretty confident we're gonna want to lathe for that. So thanks again to everybody for watching. Thanks to all of our patrons. I recently did a poll, and it's something I'm gonna be doing more this year, of just asking my patrons what direction they want the channel to go. And uh, one of the first polls I did this year was what project you want us to revisit in the lathe was the first result. If you wanna add your voice, in your opinion and kind of help direct the channel and how it goes be sure to help my patron so if you enjoy this content please subscribe and consider supporting us on patreon thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics also if you've enjoyed these series consider supporting us on patreon we are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going thanks for watching